All right, guys, let's talk about front squats for a little bit, a um, little bit about hand placement, setup, um, why we like it, why we use it, that kind of thing. So the, one of the main differences between back squat and front squat, obviously the bars in the front, that's why it's called a front squat. Um, it's gonna load your quads a little bit more um, versus back squat, it's gonna load your hips a little bit more uh, for a couple reasons. One, the weight is shifted forward and it's more above your quads. It's more above that set of joints in the front. Second, your torso is gonna be very, very upright uh, as opposed to loading on the back. So, and you'll see what I mean in a second. When we're talking about hand placement, on the front squat, you're resting the bar across the front of your body, but you also wanna have your fingertips involved in um, holding the bar in place. Now, you'll probably have seen at some point, a lot of people doing front squats like this, we don't recommend that because it's really not very stable. You, you, don't, you actually don't have a strong hold or a strong position with the bar and it can kind of, it can be unbalanced and it can fall. So what we like to teach people is I want your fingertips outside of your shoulder width. So um, the way your hands and your bar and your shoulders are going to interact with each other is the bar is actually resting across the front of the shoulders and I want those fingertips outside the shoulders. I don't want your fingertips touching the torso. That's too narrow, okay? Now, <clears throat> you don't have to hold on to the bar with your fist wrapped all the way around it. There's only a couple people that I know that are flexible enough in the wrist and the elbow and the shoulder to have a full grip on the bar and have it rest. Pam's one of them because she's a freak, okay? <laughs> but what I like to do is just set my, my three fingertips right there where I want them. I'm gonna come up and basically the bar's gonna be kind of right on the throat, but it's resting across the front of the body. I'm gonna get those elbows up as high as you can, okay? So take a look at the fingertips. All they're really doing is helping me hold the bar in place. But the reason you want these elbows up nice and high is once you initiate the squat, I don't care what kind of squat it is, your torso is gonna to lean forward a little bit, much less on the front squat than the back squat. But as you start descending, if those elbows start pointing down, the bar is gonna to wanna to roll off of you and you're gonna feel this load instead of being on the shoulder, you're gonna feel it in the wrists. So do your best to have those elbows up nice and high. You're not gonna choke yourself, even though you feel like the bar is right in your throat, you're still gonna be able to breathe. So elbows up nice and high, keep the torso as upright as possible, hit your depth, and as you come up, drive up with those elbows. Okay, hit your depth, drive up. Hit your depth, drive up. Okay, last tip on this. So one comment that we get from everybody that we teach this to, well, that hurts my wrists. Yeah, no kidding, okay? It hurts everybody's wrists. I don't care how flexible it is, that is a stretch. You're stretching that position. You'll get better at it and better at it and better at it. But if you have a really, really difficult time getting into the position, having that bar be secure on the shoulder and your fingertips involved, widen that grip out. Okay, you can go all the way out to the stripes and the knurling. You can go to two fingertips if you need to. That's gonna help you. That's actually much less stress on the wrist it's a little bit weird position because now I'm torquing the elbow a little bit, but it takes the pressure off of the wrist. But over time, the more you do this movement, you'll be able to move those fingertips in and this will feel very, very secure and solid, okay?